The Warsaw Rebellion is often considered one of the first modern wars. It is important to note that many of the accomplishments that made the Warsaw Rebellion modern predate the Warsaw Rebellion, and technically, the Crimean War deserves the title far more. However, the Warsaw Rebellion was special in that troops were much quicker and more frequently shuffled around the country to deal with emerging crises. The vast railroad network of the United States permitted the movement of troops and helped in alter the face of war. This will be a five episode series looking at troop movement. This episode will focus on the movement of the 9th Corps. The history of the 9th Corps is a storied one and closely tied to Ambrose E. Burnside, its longtime commander during the War of the Rebellion. Burnside received his first command during the war when on April 15, 1861, the governor of Rhode Island offered him command of the 1st Rhode Island Volunteer Regiment. Burnside's command quickly expanded when he received a full brigade. By August 6, 1861, Burnside received his commission as Brigadier General in the Volunteers. Was George B. McClellan keeping the Army of the Potomac inactive around Washington for the winter, Burnside received orders to prepare an expedition against the coast of North Carolina, primarily Roanoke Island. Burnside divided his small, division-sized expeditionary army into three brigades under the commands of Jesse Reno, John Foster, and John Park. On January 12, the expedition got underway. The command was able to successfully capture Roanoke Island and open the coast of North Carolina to U.S. occupation, which Burnside oversaw in the Department of North Carolina. More importantly, the small army Burnside took to the coast became the colonel around which the 9th Corps eventually emerged. After the disastrous outcome, of the Seven Days Battles, Burnside received an offer to take command of the Army of the Potomac, which he refused. Once Congress authorized the creation of Army Corps, Burnside received permission on July 17, 1862 to reorganize his command into the 9th Corps. Burnside gave a division each to Reno, Park, and Isaac Stevens. The 9th Corps departed from Newport News on August 2nd for Fredericksburg. The Corps remained in Fredericksburg to guard the location against the rebel ac activities. Part of the 9th Corps were, however, delegated under Reno's field command to the Army of Virginia and battled the rebels in the Second Battle of Bull Run. The Corps also lost General Stevens during the small engagement at the Battle of Chantilly on September 1, 1862. Reunited with the Army of the Potomac, Reno remained in command as Burnside took on in a large role within the army, commanding the right wing. The Corps had new division commanders with Orlando B. Wilcox, Samuel D. Sturgis, and Isaac Rodman. For the Maryland campaign, the Corps also included the so-called Kenawha Division from Western Virginia. The Corps saw action on South Mountain and Antietam. Reno's temporary command continued with Burnside assuming command of the entire Army of the Potomac 
on November 5, 1862. The Battle of Fredericksburg was a major failure for Burnside, but it was the inaction and disastrous mud marsh later that winter that brought him down. Still seen as a valuable commander, Burnside received a new appointment with the Department of Ohio, which included Kentucky and Eastern Tennessee. Burnside requested that his 9th Corps follow him to the new department. On March 19, 1863, General John G. Park ordered the two divisions of the 9th Corps to board trains and proceed to Kentucky. While Burnside organized his command and the 9th Corps engaged in occupation work, the war brought new challenges elsewhere. When Ulysses S. Grant's army got around Vicksburg and was able to besiege the city, Grant needed more troops. As a result, in June, the 9th Corps received orders to help with the siege of Vicksburg. General Park commanded the two divisions on this detour, but was able to keep casualties limited, except those suffering from disease, such as malaria. Once the siege was over, Park and the 9th Corps joined one more expedition against Jackson, Mississippi. The absence of the 9th man, Burnside could not start his campaign into eastern Tennessee until they returned. In August 1863, the Corps departed Mississippi by steamer to return to Kentucky for a brief rest before the main campaign against East Tennessee. By now, the once 13,000 man Corps was down to only 6,000 men. With Burnside in command of the department and expedition, and Park serving as his chief of staff, General Robert Porter assumed command of the Corps. The little army was rather successful and defeated the enemy forces at Knoxville, which they occupied. The army came under attack by James Longstreet's forces, which besieged Knoxville after the Battle of Chickamauga. However, the rebel defeat at Chittanooga lifted the siege of Knoxville too. Burnside had achieved another signature campaign victory with the Nines Corps. After the actions in East Tennessee, the Nines Corps was on its last major railroad journey. General Burnside was back in command of his corps and took the unit to Annapolis, Maryland for reorganization, which included the creation of four divisions, an increase in numbers to almost 20,000 soldiers initially, but eventually even more. One of the divisions in the reorganized nines was fully composed of African-American troops. By May, the corps had over 30,000 soldiers in its four divisions, spread over 42 regiments and 14 batteries. The Corps was effectively brand new, with many untested regiments and some of the older units filled with raw recruits and conscripts. During the Overland Campaign, Burnside's 9th Corps was joined to George Gordon Meade's Army of the Potomac, but remained a separate and independent entity. After some issues with miscommunications, Grant convinced Burnside to overlook his superior ranks and accept association with the Army of the Potomac under Meade's command. Burnside and his command did not gain many laurels during the Siege of Petersburg. The Corps' main moment of fame arrived with a plan to blow a hole into the rebel lines and have Edward Ferreira's African-American division charge the line and hopefully break the enemy lines. The coal miners of the 48th Pennsylvania did an excellent job digging the needed tunnel and placed four tons of gunpowder under the enemy line. The assault was a disaster, with a last minute change to the order of attack, placing Ferrero's man towards the back. The assault was a disaster, with 470 men killed among the 3,470 casualties of the Battle of the Crater. On August 13, 1864, Burnside departed the war and the Nines Corps for leave of absence. He never returned. He was replaced by Park, who together with Wilcox commanded the Corps at the Petersburg Front for the remainder of the war. Units of the 9th Corps were eventually among the first to occupy Petersburg. On July 27, 1865, the 9th Corps was officially disbanded. The 9th Corps was involved in fighting in many of the theaters of the War of the Rebellion, taking part in the campaigns along the North Carolina coast, Proto-9th Corps, Virginia, East Tennessee, 
and the Mississippi River Valley Campaign. Using steamboats and railroads, the units, 10,000 men, and their equipment could move with relative ease from one geographic area to the next of the war. While we always think of the 11th and 12th Corps' emergency move from Virginia to Tennessee, the 9th Corps predates them by a few months. This unit is a great example of the change in mobility in war and how a unit can find in many different theaters of the war thanks to the railroad and other modern means of transportation. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.